Hi, welcome back. So in this lesson, we are working on relating addition and subtraction to each other and how we might use those to solve some basic algebra equations. So first, let's start off talking about uh, the different parts of an addition problem. In an addition problem, we have an addend, and addends are a number that is being added. And the sum is the result. After you add, so it's the result of an addition problem. An addition problem. There we go. OK, so what I'd like you to do is look at these two problems here inside the box and identify any add-ins that you see and any sums that you see. Just pause while you do that and then come back to the recording. Okay, you're back. Let's see what we have. Add-ins are numbers that are being added. So we have two add-ins here. We have five and we have two. And the sum, that's the answer, that would be seven. Uh, for this other problem, the add-ins are 25 and 16. And the sum here is 41. All right, not so bad. On down to the different parts of a subtraction problem. So in a subtraction problem, we have the minuend, the subtrahend, and the difference. Let's start with the difference. The difference is the answer. But of course, this is the answer to a subtraction problem. And the subtrahend is the number being subtracted. So you kind of have part of the word of subtract right there. So this is the number or the amount being subtracted. And that leaves the minuend to be the other number. So the minuend is like the number that you start with whatever it is that you have before you subtracted. So this is the number from which something is being subtracted. Okay, so like you did before, uh, pause the recording and see if you can identify the different parts of the subtraction problems in this table below. Okay, you're back. Let's see how we did. Uh, the minuend, the number from which something is being subtracted. Here we have 10 equals 14 minus 4. 4 is being subtracted from 14, so the minuend is 14. The subtrahend, the amount being subtracted, is 4. And the difference, the answer, is 10. Um, let's see, on this other one, our answer, the difference, is 64. The amount being subtracted is 36. And the part that we are subtracting something from would be 100. So hopefully you did that pretty well. Let's we'll slide down a little bit further here. We want to talk about the commutative property of addition. So commutative has this root word commute in it. Just like you commute back and forth to work or you commute back and forth to school, commute talks about moving things. So the commutative property of addition says that you can add, right, it's a property of addition, and you can add numbers in any order. And you already knew that. So let's write that down first. You can add, oh, hold on a second. There, clean that up a little bit. You can add the and of course, the things that are being added are called add-ends. So let's use some good terminology here in any order. You already know that 5 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 5. If we had to give this commutative property of addition some symbols, then we would say a plus b 
Okay. And in any order means that I can do B plus A if I would like. Okay, so that's an important one for you to know and recognize. The question is, what about a commutative property of subtraction? Can you subtract the pieces in any order? Does 5 minus 3 give you three, the same thing as 3 minus 5? And it doesn't. So this is garbage. There is no such thing as the commutative property of subtraction. This does not exist. Hold on, can't spell today. Okay, let's try that again. Does not exist. So for subtraction, the order in which you subtract matters. If you had 5 minus 3, you would not get the same thing as if you did 3 minus 5. Right? One of those would give you a negative answer. So there is no commutative property of addition. Let's slide on to the next page. Your job is to try to apply the commutative property of addition to these first two equations here. So remember, the commutative property of addition says you can move around add-ends. Give it a shot. Identify the add-ends and move them around. Just pause the video and come back when you're done. Okay, so let's see what you did. Remember, commutative property of addition says that we can reorder the add-ends. And add-ends are things being added. So over here in the left-hand equation, 62 has nothing to do with the addition, and we're just going to leave it alone. The things that are being added are the 7 and the x. So rather than say 7 plus x, we will say x plus 7. Um, same thing over here, 500 is not being added at all, so we'll just go ahead and leave it alone. And on the right-hand side, rather than saying y plus 32, let's say 32 plus y. Okay, um, the addition property of equality. That's kind of an interesting one. So essentially, equality, we have a property of equality. It says we are going to maintain equality. So we're going to do some things. We're going to add because it's an addition property of equality, and we're still going to maintain equality. So imagine, for example, that you had, say, four quarters in your left hand and a dollar bill in your right hand. The left hand and the right hand both have the same amount of money, but it looks different, right? It's just a visual difference. If you came by and somebody dropped a dime into each one of your hands, you've added a dime to both sides but you still have the same amount of money. Not the same amount of money you had before, but the same amount of money in each hand. And that's what the addition property of equality says, that you can go ahead and add, so adding the same amount, to both sides of an equation, and this is really important. We have to make sure that we do it to both sides. Otherwise, we haven't maintained equality. And doing this gives us a new equation, but it maintains equality. So in symbols, we would say this. If you start off with A equal B. So we have two things. They are exactly the same value, but they have different appearances. So let's imagine for a second that um, the two sides of this equation, right, B is on one side, A is on the other, that these are your children. Um, and you've always seen children fight before. And they fight about the tiniest of things. If you decide to take child A and give it a new toy, say the new toy called C, then child B is going to want a new toy also. And you can't just give child B any old toy. It has to be the same toy child A has. Otherwise, somebody is going to be unhappy and want the other person's toy. So pretty much that's what we do. We just add C to both sides of the equation. So this is what the addition property of equality says for us. If A equals B, then 
adding c on both sides still maintains equality. We also have a subtraction property of equality. Right? You can take the same amount away from both sides and they will both sides will still be equal. So you can subtract subtracting the same amount. from both sides of an equation. Maintains equality. My letters keep disappearing here. There we go. So if we have two things that are equal and you take an amount away from one side and take the same amount away from the other side, then the two new amounts are still equal. All right, so this is something you should know. And of course, this is something that you should know. Let's see if we can get an idea of how this works. I'll scroll down a little bit here. So here we have an equation. An equation is just a statement that says two things are equal. And what we want to do is add six to both sides of this equation. When we say both sides, we mean both sides of the equal sign. So we just want to make a little divider here. All right, on the right hand side of the equal sign, we will add six. On the left hand side of the equal sign, we will add six. And I'm sure you've already guessed and, or seen, right? x plus 9 equals 10. x is 1. We can tell that right away. But let's see what happens when we add 6 to both sides of the equation. 10 plus 6 is 16. Equals stays right where it always was. 9 plus 6 is 15. And of course, x is still over here. And now we have x plus 15 is equal to 16. It's a new looking equation, but x equal to 1 still solves it both sides still have the same value of 16. All right, let's keep that same equation we had, x plus 9 equals 10. We know the answer is x equals 1. And what we'd like to do now is subtract 3 from both sides. So we'll subtract 3 on the right-hand side. We'll subtract 3 on the left-hand side and see what happens. 10 minus 3, well, that's 7. Equals stays right where it was. 9 minus 3, that's 6. And the x and the plus sign stay where they were. And we have a brand new equation, x plus 6 equals 7. And the answer is still 1. So you see we can do the same thing, an addition or a subtraction, to both sides of the equal sign and still maintain equality, still maintain the solution that we were looking for. Well, what we just did didn't really help us out very much. I mean, we could practice it again here and add 12 to both sides of the equation just to really hammer home that we can do this. 10 plus 12 is 22. Keep the equals in the middle. 9 plus 12 is 21. Keep the plus sign where it was. Keep the x where it was. Brand new equation. Both sides are still worth 22 because we knew that x was equal to 1. All right, one more time. Divide this down here. This time what we want to do is subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. All right, so 10 minus 9, that's 1. Equal stays in the middle where it was. 9 minus 9, that's 0. And so to say x plus 0, that's just exactly the same as just having x. So there we are, x equals 1. So the thing of it is here is that knowing we can add and subtract the same amount from both sides of an equation means that if we just choose a good amount, we can figure out the value for the variable. So we'd like to choose the amount we are adding or subtracting wisely. All right, so let's look at a new one here. Looking at number six, here we have x minus seven is equal to three, and seven is being subtracted from x. So what we want to do is undo the subtraction. And we already know that addition undoes subtraction. So if I add seven here and add seven here, let's see what happens. Subtracting seven and then adding seven, that's a big fat zero. 
So really what we just have is a plain old ordinary x sitting on the left hand side. On the right hand side we have 3 plus 7 and that gives us 10. We should probably check this. If x was equal to 10 this would have said 10 minus 7 equals 3 and that's a good answer. Okay, so let's slide down here because we're going to be working with some equations now. So the first thing we want to know is what is a variable? A variable is a letter that is used to represent a value. And a solution is a value for the variable that makes the equation true. So when you're reading directions and it asks you to solve, that means find all solutions. For right now, our equations are only going to have one solution, but it's not hard to create an equation that has more than one. So let's see. Here we go. Let's look at number seven. Number seven, it says we have C plus 38 equals 52. So we're adding 38 to the C. Our job is to undo this addition, and to undo addition, we use subtraction. So subtract 38 here, subtract 38 there. Keep the equals in the middle right where it was. So 52 minus 38, that's 14. 38 minus 38 is a great big zero, so we don't need to write that down. And there's the C all by itself. So here, C is worth 14. So when we check, we say, hey, 14 plus 38, is this really worth 52? And say, yes, it is. OK, why don't you take a second, try problems number 8 and 9 on your own, and then come back to the recording when you are ready. OK, I'm going to start with number 9, because that's actually the nicer one here. Um, we have 11.4 that's being subtracted from V. So to undo the subtraction, we are going to add 11.4. So we'll separate our sides here, add 11.4 to the left-hand side, and add 11.4 to the right-hand side. All right, so let's see what happens. On the right-hand side, 38 plus 11.4 is equal to 49.4. On the left hand side, subtracting 11.4 and then adding 11.4 gives us a big fat zero. So that's gone. And V is here all by itself. So when we check, we want to say whether or not 49.4 minus 11.4 is worth 48. And it is. OK, number eight's a little bit different because here we're adding W. We're not adding a number to a variable. But lucky for us, we have the commutative property of addition. So we could rewrite this as W plus 2,185 being equal to 4,187. All right, that's a little nicer. We undo addition by using a subtraction. So we'll subtract 2,185 from the left-hand side, subtract 2,185 from the right hand side. So on the right hand side we just do the subtraction 4187 subtract 2185 and this turns out to be 2002. Remember that equals stays right where it was. Ah, there part of my equals sign kept disappearing. On the left hand side adding 2185 and then subtracting 2185 makes a big fat zero. So this does W here all by itself. So let's check and see what happens. We had 2,185 plus the value for W, which is 2,002, 
and we want to double check to make sure that this is worth 4187 and it does. Okay, um, number 10 is a little bit different. In number 10, we are subtracting h. And we don't have a commutative property of subtraction. We can't rewrite this left-hand side and um, reposition the pieces. We can't say h minus 13 uh, and 16 hundredths. It's not going to work. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, um, let's just work with this undoing idea. If we are subtracting h, we can undo that by adding h. All right, so let's give that a try. Add h to both sides. All right, this looks a little weird, I know, but just sort of trust me here for a second and let's see what happens. All right, on the left-hand side, subtracting h and adding h make a big fat zero just like they did before, just like it worked for the numbers. So the left-hand side just has 13.16 equals, stays right where it was, and now you're wondering, well, what's 2.4 plus h? And since I don't know what h is, we can't really add these together. It feels kind of strange. It feels strange, um, well, that's the way it's supposed to feel, because you can't add those together. So we just have 2.4 plus h. OK, but this looks some, um, well, maybe we didn't make so much progress. Oh, wait a minute, maybe we did. We have that commutative property of addition. We can think of this as 13.16 being equal to h plus 2.4. Right? You can rewrite your add ends in any order. Oh, so that's a little nicer. Now that we're thinking of this as adding 2.4 to h, we can undo the addition. So subtract 2.4 from the right hand side, and don't forget to subtract 2.4 from the left hand side. And let's see what happens. So here on the right hand side, adding 2.4 and subtracting 2.4 gave us a big fat zero. And all we have left on the right hand side is just h. Equals stays where it was. And on the left hand side, we have 13.16 minus a 2.4. And we should be left with 10.76. OK, uh, we did a lot to this, and it felt a little odd. So we should definitely check this one. If we started off with 13.16 and subtracted 10.76, would we get 2.4? Check it out on your calculator. Make sure it works. And it does. That's a good thing. Okay, that's pretty much the end. Good luck on your homework. Bye-bye.